Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about station power and power distribution. Now, like many of us around the world, I've been stuck inside not doing a whole lot of portable communication. And now I'm using this downtime to upgrade my shack power and power distribution with the Buddy Pole Power Plus. If you stick with me a while, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Effective power distribution for our stations is usually an afterthought. We get a radio, we get a power supply, we get some cables and power poles, and we wire it all together. When we're trying to come up with a power and power distribution strategy, which fits into our emergency communications plans as well, well, we have to put a little bit more thought into the topic. So this is the Buddy Pole Power Plus. Now, although it looks like standard power distribution, it's actually a very clever device. I'll give you the specs on it in a moment, but first I wanna show you my main shack power supply. My primary station power supply is the 576 watt hour solar generator we built on the channel. That generator is in 4S3P configuration using 15 amp hour cells. Now the solar generator also has a Genesan solar charge controller built in. Keep this in mind as we go over the station power strategy with the Buddy Pole Power Plus. I run an 8 gauge cable from the solar generator to the Buddy Pole Power Plus. So when it's operating here in the shack, the solar generator acts more like a battery storage system leaving the Buddy Pole Power Plus to act as a power management system for the hamshack. Most of the time my radio equipment is operated off grid, but I do have a power supply connected to mains power, which is also connected to the DC input of the Buddy Pole Power Mini. This is an industrial power supply, which is completely RF quiet. At the moment I'm using two channels from that power supply, which are combined to output 30 amps to the Buddy Pole Power Plus. Now, I'm not always using that power supply, and I'll explain that shortly, but when I am, power is divided between the A and B ports, the USB ports, and charging the battery storage system. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, if you remember that Genesan charge controller inside of our battery storage or solar generator, whatever you want to call it, that's still connected, or these solar panels are still connected to that solar generator. So this allows the power supply and the Buddy Pole Power Plus to provide clean, stable DC power to our comms gear. Now this configuration also gives us some added redundancy since it allows the battery storage system to continue to act as a solar generator and provide power to our communications gear in the event of a grid down. So the Buddy Pole Power Plus has two DC inputs. This top input is for the DC in coming from the power supply. The second, the blue input, is for your battery. Now it also has a total of four power pole outputs and two USB ports. The power pole ports are divided into two banks, bank A and bank B. The USB ports are on their own and they're always on. The A and B ports can be turned off individually. And they have their own switches on the front panel of the Power Plus. Now before we get into all of the features and functionalities of the Buddy Pole Power Plus, let's take a look at how my station is set up and the strategy behind it. So now we can actually talk about how I've got the Buddy Pole Power Plus configured with my other peripherals and the ham shack. The first peripheral we have connected to the Buddy Pole Power Mini is our power supply. This is true although I'm primarily charging my battery storage with solar power. The power supply is connected to the DC input on the Buddy Pole Power Mini. The next peripheral connected to the Buddy Pole Power Mini is my 576 watt hour solar generator or battery storage. This is connected to the battery input on the Buddy Pole Power Plus. The tower mounted solar panels are also connected to the Genesan charge controller embedded in the battery storage. Because I have lithium iron phosphate batteries selected and charging enabled, the Buddy Pole Power Plus will keep my solar generator topped up whenever mains power is available. 
On the flip side, if there is a failure in mains power, the tower-mounted solar panels will charge and keep topped up the solar generator. This is an amazingly awesome double redundancy with automatic switching between AC power or the battery backup in the form of the solar generator. And all of this is done without any user input. And because I'm normally running off of solar power, I usually disable the power supply and let the solar panels do the charging. So in practice, the only time the power supply is actually running is when I've overextended myself with the solar generator and I need to top it up. I imagine this is going to be the preferred setup for the off-grid ham radio station operating with battery storage and solar power. Finally, all of my communications equipment is connected directly to the Buddy Pole Power Plus as required for the day's communications activities. Now here's one tip for those of you who would like to use the Buddy Pole Power Plus with your battery storage systems. The Power Plus battery output connects directly to the BMS input on your battery storage. If you want the redundancy with your solar panels like it is set up on my station, those solar panels need to be connected directly to the solar input of your battery storage. Don't connect the Buddy Pole Power Plus to the solar input on your battery storage system. Now we can take a look at how we set up the Buddy Pole Power Plus with our lithium iron phosphate batteries. The Buddy Pole Power Plus has a few menus you can run through to change its settings. It also has menus and screens telling you what's happening or what's going on with all of the systems connected to the Buddy Pole Power Plus. For example, on this current screen, we can see how much voltage is coming in the DC port as well as the current load on that port. We can also see what the voltage state of the battery is and how much load is actually on the battery. This next menu allows us to change the settings for the type of battery we're using, whether or not charging is enabled, and what is the charge rate in amps. When we'd like to set up our batteries, we need to switch over to the battery menu. The battery menu allows you to select the type of battery, either lead acid or lithium iron phosphate. It allows you to enable or disable the charger. It allows you to change or adjust the maximum current rate during charge. And it allows you to disable or enable auto off. And since I'm using a lithium iron phosphate solar generator, I'll change the battery type to lithium iron phosphate. I'll also enable the charger and I'll set the maximum charge rate at four amps. Finally, I'll leave that auto off disabled. There's also another menu that has protections for your gear and battery. So these first two settings, VH limit and VL limit, this is voltage high limit and voltage low limit. These two settings will limit the high and low voltage according to your gear's operating limits. For example, if your rig has a maximum operating voltage of 16 volts, you could set that VH limit at 15.8 to ensure it doesn't exceed that. It's the same for the low voltage setting. Now for these next two settings, these are the current limits for the Group A and Group B ports. So on my A port, I have the Yaesu FT891 and the Raspberry Pi. On the B port, I have a Zygu G90, I have the Veritex Standard VX1210, and I have a Raspberry Pi. I divide the available current between those two ports based on the current draw I expect from the peripherals attached to it. I then save those settings and move on. So this next menu tells us about what's happening on each port and which battery input is in use as well as how much voltage is available or coming in through that port. So as I mentioned a short time ago on port A, I've got the Yaesu FT891 and a Raspberry Pi. On port B, I have the Zygu G90. Now because the Yaesu FT891 is in receive mode, we have about one amp on that port. On output B, we have the Zygu G90 also in receive mode, and that's got about 590 milliamps on that port. So the screen also tells us the division of current divided between uh, both ports, as well as the input voltage coming from the active input, either the power supply or the battery backup. 
Now there's also one more screen which shows us the real-time activity from incoming DC port as well as the battery. So we've already plugged in the battery, but when the power supply is plugged into the DC input, all of the information about both of these inputs is shown on the display. On the DC in side of the menu, we see the voltage coming in from the power supply and the current load. On the battery side, we see 14 volts because that's the battery's voltage, and we see zero amps because there's no load currently on it. The point here really is the Buddy Pole Power Plus gives you all the information about the state of your system that one could possibly need. But now I think it's time to talk about the main features and functionalities I think the Buddy Pole Power Plus offers us. First of all, I think supporting both lithium iron phosphate and lead acid battery chemistries is critical. This means if you're upgrading from a lead acid battery to lithium iron phosphate, you don't have to buy a new Buddy Pole Power Plus to support the additional battery chemistry. In the event of a grid failure, the Buddy Pole Power Plus will automatically switch over from DC input with your power supply to the battery or auxiliary battery on the battery input of the Buddy Pole Power Plus. Now this was really a big one for me. The Buddy Pole Power Plus doesn't mind charging the battery in parallel with a solar charge controller and solar panels. The Buddy Pole Power Plus has user programmable voltage and current limits to protect our gear and our batteries. Finally, the Buddy Pole Power Plus has four power pole outputs. Those outputs are divided into two groups and each group can be turned on and off individually. The device also has two 1.5 amp USB ports. Finally, the Buddy Pole Power Plus can sustain a 40 amp load across all of its output ports. Now there's many more features, but with a video like this, uh, trying to think about what might be important to you becomes very abstract. So I would suggest if you have a specific question about the functionality of the Buddy Pole Power Plus, you leave it as a comment. And I'll also leave a link to the Buddy Pole Power Plus in the description. So now that I have the Buddy Pole Power Plus here in the ham shack, I think the next project for later this year will be a one kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery storage system for the ham shack. I think a project like this, combining these two different technologies, will take my off grid ham shack to an entirely new level. Let me know what you think. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree, like it or dislike it. Just give feedback. The only thing I ask is that you're polite. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.